How did you end up in at Harmony Movement? Or I was with Harmony since 2009. So, so I was in teacher's college. Um, and so part of our teacher's college was we had to do community service time with an organization that served the community, but education as well. That was an organization that I picked randomly. Like we were given an option of different ones. And so we got to pick where. And so by, it was by chance that I picked yeah. that organization. But it was beautiful because it impacted me on so many levels after that. So yeah. that's that's where I started. What would you say about, you know, Sahara then during that period, uh, even before I came into the picture? I'm just curious. Did you feel like you knew yourself a little bit more than you did coming in? I went into teacher's college with the hope to inspire a change. And I know it sounds very cliche. And I was like, I'm going to teach history and I'm going to teach history. History is very powerful, right? Like who gets yeah. to tell the story? And they say like the winners get to tell the story or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm saying that in air quotes. Yeah. Um, and like whose stories get like isolated or exiled or whatever. And whose stories get included. And so I thought I was going to go into schools and create change. Um I was very passionate at that time. I was very, like, inspired. I was very focused on, like, this identity of of being a transformer. Harmony Movement helped me in so many ways because it really showed me, like, justice work. Like, I was like, wow, this is decolonizing type of work. Like, at that time, I was interested in education for the purpose of liberation of, like, your mind and your spirit so you can really see yourself as an empowered person and not according to the stories and mirrors that are shown to us that are disempowering and things like that, right? Right. It had huge impact on me because it took me to this point in curriculum around identity to realizing like internalized self-hate that was huge for me and it's one thing to do the work logically like through your mind and it's another to feel the impact of something and I know in most of our educational settings we honor the mind but we don't realize the emotional embodied impact of some of these things that we unpack like what do you do that helps you tap into that feeling i'm going to give you a story so to to demonstrate that okay so i I facilitated a workshop for a group of young girls called my art is me and they were to paint the queen of their heart which is like so they could identify with themselves from this place of beauty and power and love and all of that and these were young racialized women and i knew that society actually portrays these women or like identities for these women in a very like disempowered weak, poor, et cetera, et cetera, like all the negativity, right? So one of the participants uh, was painting, and this is about painting themselves. So Mm -hmm. self-portraits so you can feel you're empowered and you're in charge of your own image. In her painting, she noticed a tear. So this is her going by intuitive. So in her painting, she noticed a tear, and she, like, gently, like, wiped, like, did a wiping on her painting as a way to create that sense of self-soothing and self-connection. So she painted the tear on there because she noticed it, and then she tried to, like, create the soothing medicine for that part of herself. And wow. to me, like, it was so beautiful. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So 